Hello fellow Gadgeteers, welcome back to the Gadgety Ron channel and another episode of What's on My Bench. Today on the Gadgety Ron workbench we have a Martin 000 X1 AE, triple O size body with acoustic electric. Uh, this thing is straight from the factory, brand new out of the box and it is a bear to play. This thing is set up so horribly as they so often are from the factory. Uh, whenever you buy a new guitar you should always, always, first thing you want to do is get it set up. Uh, they never, virtually never, come set up well from the factory. And so. so, this one in particular, the action is extremely high, the, tr the truss rod is out of adjustment, and it just is in dire need of a setup. As well, uh, because it's been sitting for a while, the strings have started to corrode as the Martin strings often do for whatever reason so we're going to go ahead and do a string change on it as well but I'm going to measure the action right now to give you an idea of what the setup is currently like as it came out of the box at the twelfth fret first string is at about ninety about ninety five thousandths of a no ninety eight thousandths of an inch on the bass side, the sixth string, the low E, is at 125 thousandths of an inch. 128 thousandths of an inch. So, very, very high at the 12th fret. And at the nut, this is where you're doing all the real work and where your fingers will really get sore. The first string is at 23 thousandths of an inch. Second string, 32 thousandths of an inch. The G string, 28 thousandths of an inch. The D string, 26 thousandths of an inch. The A string, 28 thousandths of an inch. And the low E, is at 32 thousandths of an inch. So the action is way high both at the nut and at the bridge. So we're going to first adjust the truss rod. Second we're going to file the nut slots deeper. Third we're going to bring the bridge saddle down a little bit and then we'll remeasure the action to see where we are. We'll measure the action several times along the way just to make sure everything's moving along as it should. But the first thing we want to do is check the truss rod. The truss rod on this thing, the way we check that is we hold our string down at the 15th fret with our pinky and the first fret with our other hand and then the string forms a straight edge. You want to see how much deflection you get there to give you an idea of how much relief you have in the truss rod. This one is a little out of adjustment as they almost always are from the factory but it's not terrible. So we will go ahead and adjust that a little bit. We're going to tighten the truss rod Probably about a quarter turn or so. We'll recheck it. Darn near perfect. I'm going to go just a hair more. If you ever encounter too much resistance when adjusting the truss rod, you want to stop because you can break the truss rod if you're not careful. It should be relatively easy to turn. If you feel you're having to put a lot of force behind it, then something's wrong. Yeah, there we go. That's looking really good. Now let's, we'll recheck the action at the 12th fret. Now you never want to adjust the truss rod to bring the action down. Adjusting the truss rod will affect the action. So especially if you have a lot of relief and you, you flatten out that neck a little bit and give it less relief, then the string action will come down. But you don't want to do that with the action as your goal. You're, you're trying to get the truss rod set optimal, optimally, then you adjust everything else to where it needs to be. That's just the first step. So, that first string now has come down to about 78 thousandths of an inch. About 78 to 80 thousandths of an inch. And then the low E, whereas before was 120 thousandths, it is now 110 thousandths. So it, it came down a bit. The action will have also come down a little bit here at the nut. So we will recheck here and then we'll start filing those nut slots. Okay, on the first string, the high E 
is at about about fifteen thousandths. So we want that around ten to twelve thousandths. So we're going to start filing these nut slots. Now this is a, a, a 0 0.012 gauge on the first string. So we want to use a, a nut file that's a little bit wider than that so that the string doesn't bind in that slot. If you use a file exactly the same width as the slot, as the string, then the string may bind in the slot. You'll get pinging and that is your string binding in the slot. It will give you tuning issues every time. You always want to measure twice, cut once as they say. So we're going to file just a little bit and then recheck. It's very easy to cut these slots too deep and then you will have buzzing issues at the nut or the first fret. So, alright, that's looking really good. That's about ten thousandths. This D string, I'm sorry, the B string is at twenty eight thousandths. That one needs to come down quite a lot. This one, I believe, is a 0 0.016 gauge. So we're going to use our 20 gauge nut file. You want to give the thing just a little bit of an angle. You don't want the, the slot to be exactly flat. You want to have just a little bit of an angle so that the string breaks at the bridge side, the, the edge of the nut on the bridge side. Otherwise your intonation will be off. But when you do file with that angle, you don't want too much of an angle because you can gouge your headstock if, you, if you're too sharp here, too steep an angle. So very carefully file that at a slight angle. And ideally those slots will be curved a little bit, like this. This guitar has a bone nut, so it's a little bit more dense, a little bit harder material than tusk or plastic. So it does take a little bit more effort to file it, but again, you want to be very gentle with these things because it's so easy to go too far. Okay, it's looking good. Now the G string, <coughs> the G string is at about 22 thousandths. And the G string is going to be a 20, I believe a 26 on this set, 25 on this set. So we will use our 26 gauge file. Again, you always want to go a little bit wider than the string so you don't get any binding in the slot. string is at 22 thousandths. D string on this set is a 32. So we're going to jump up to our 36 gauge nut file. Now if you do happen to cut these nut slots too deep, it is possible to fix that. It's uh, typically a job for someone who's got some experience but it involves using bone dust and super glue to fill that nut slot back in a little bit and then you recut it or re refile it to the proper depth. Right, that's looking good. The A string is at about 22 thousandths. The A string is a 42 on this one. So we will use 
We will use our 50 gauge nut file. So that file was binding a little in that slot, so it was a little bit on the narrow side. And now it's going to be nice and wide so that that string doesn't bind. Now this guitar is a little bit more of an entry level guitar, not necessarily for one of the more experienced players. So we're going to want this action to be a little bit lower than we might on a higher end guitar. Okay, the low E is at 23 thousandths. We want that somewhere around 16 to 18 for, th for this type of player. This is a 54 gauge, so we're going to use our 55 gauge nut file. Alright, that's at about 16 thousandths. Now let's recheck down here. Now that we've got the nut slots where they need to be and the truss rod where it needs to be, now we need to look at the bridge saddle. Okay, so on the on the high E side, we're at about 80 thousandths. On the low E, we are at 102 or 103 thousandths. So I would like this low E to be down at around 75 to 80. And at 104, 105, we need to take the action down 30 thousandths at the 12th fret. And since the 12th fret is halfway between the nut and the bridge, in order to get 30 thousandths here, we need to double that here to bring it down to 60. So 60 here will bring us down 30 here. Now on the treble side, high E, and we're at around 80. Maybe not quite 80. Okay, so I would like to bring this one down to around 60 for this type of player. So about 20 thousandths here. So we're going to double that at the bridge. So 40 thousandths here. So 60 thousandths on the treble side. I'm sorry, 40 thousandths on the treble side. 60 thousandths on the bass side. That's quite a lot. But we can do it. So what we're going to do first, we're going to get our caliper. All right, we're going to use our caliper to measure how much to bring that bridge saddle down. We're going to take these strings off. Actually, we're just going to loosen the strings right now. We will do our string change last because we want to do all the work on the old strings. So I'm just going to loosen these right now enough to get that bridge saddle out of there. what that looks like. Now sometimes you can slide this bridge saddle out with a pair of pliers if you're careful and do it gently. So we're going to try that. We're just going to grab it here on the edge, lift straight up and slide it right out. Okay, now we decided we needed to take off 60 on the base side. 60 thousandths. So we have our caliper set to 60 thousandths. Clamp it down and then we will, this is the base side, this is the treble side. So we will mark that at 60 thousandths on the base side. And then we're going to drop it down to 40 thousandths for the treble side. We're just going to cut a little groove there. I don't know if you can see that. See the little groove I just cut on each side. And we will mark that with a pencil so that we can more easily see it.
this is a, either a, I think this is a tusk saddle so it's not too terribly dense should be relatively easy to file this down now this is my nut and nut and saddle sander I'll put the link in the description for these these are around 200 bucks but if you do much of this kind of work these things are a lifesaver they are, make life so much easier and more accurate to file these bridge saddles down so what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these screws these control the height and these control the tension to keep the bridge saddle in place I'm going to slide this down in there centered over those two screws now we're going to adjust this until you can just see those pencil marks height is adjusted now we're going to clamp it down with these side tensioners Get that nice and snug now this remaining material here on the top this is what we're going to file away so to do that we're going to first move the guitar out of the way move our neck rest now I have here on my bench some sandpaper this is uh, I believe they call it stick it sandpaper. It's adhesive backed paper. This I believe is a 220 grit and we're just going to run this this nut and saddle sander rides on these little wheels here. So we're going to ride this along along the uh, sandpaper and that will file the bottom of this and it will keep it flat because this nut and saddle sander is going to keep it flat against the sandpaper. If you do you can do this by hand but it's really easy to, to bend that saddle one way or the other when you're doing it by hand and you will have an unlevel saddle that way. So this, this kind of automates the process. So we're just going to take this, put a little bit of downward pressure on it and we're just going to run it back and forth along the sandpaper. You can see it taking off the material there along the bottom. Now on our on a bone saddle this takes a lot longer. But on tough or plastic it goes pretty quickly. As you can see there it's already taken off a lot of that material. In fact that's just about there. We'll You want to make sure you don't run off the edge of the sandpaper here because then you'll get a little bit of unlevel there. That looks really good. Okay. Now we're going to we're going to loosen this. And as you can see, our pencil marks are now gone. And this thing should be just about where it needs to be in terms of height. Now we're going to slide this back into the into the bridge and we shall tighten our strings we'll tune it to pitch
Reception should be nice and low. Alright, that put us almost exactly where we need to be. 59 thousandths. And 70 thousandths. That looks really good. Yes, everything looks really good there. these strings. The setup is basically done. So we're going to replace the strings. We'll check the tension on all the tuners and then we will be good to go. Before I do that, I'm going to check all the tuners. We want to make sure these bushings are all snug here. Not too tight, but snug because they will vibrate loose over time and then they'll rattle and it will sound like a buzz and you won't be able to tell where it's coming from. It'll sound like it's coming from the bridge or the nut or a fret, when in actuality it's a loose bushing or loose nut here on the tuners. So those are nice and snug. <coughs> And we'll also check the tension of the knobs. Sometimes these are these work their way loose. That one's a little loose. These two are a little loose, but I'll check them all. I'm just going to tighten those just a hair. You want to have just a little bit of resistance when you're turning those things. Otherwise, they also can work their way loose and rattle. If you crank them down too much, you run the risk of cracking these little nylon bushings that are in here that serve to reduce friction. That feels good. I like to put all my strings on at once and then cut them to length all at once. Just speeds up the process a little bit. And I bend the ball ends of these strings a little bit so that they will rest up against, they will pull up snug against the bottom of the bridge plate. If you leave them straight they run the risk of being pushed down a little bit too far and they will hang down below and they will rattle or vibrate as you play the guitar and you won't know where that buzz is coming from. But by bending this a little bit, it, once it clears the bottom of the bridge plate, it will tuck under and be pulled up against the bottom of the bridge plate. It also serves to reduce wear on the bottom of that bridge plate. Over time, those things will get chipped away and eaten away, and you'll end up having all sorts of structural problems with the guitar as a result.
you know, I like to cut these all to length at once. So my rule is this is the sixth string. It's going to go on this post, so I cut it the length to the next to the length of the next post. We always go one post beyond where we're going to where that string is going to attach. That will give us enough windings around the post to keep it nice and snug and secure. D string. We're going to go about one post length beyond. Now on the G string I like to go a little more because it's a very thin string inside this winding. The unwound part of the string is extremely thin and fragile. So I like to give it a little extra winding on that one around the post. Okay. give these strings a good stretch. Don't want to pull them too hard because they can break, but we want to stretch them just a little bit because these windings around the string post, they're going to they're going to settle into position. They'll be stretching for a little while, but they'll settle into position and once they do, they'll be nice and secure and won't slip. But it'll take a few hours for them to break in and settle into position.
Yeah, so that's darn near perfect. That thing plays like an electric guitar now. So there we have it, our Martin Triple O X1AE, all set up and ready to go. Somebody's going to love this guitar. Thank you again for tuning in to the Gadgety Ron channel and another episode of What's on My Bench. Until next time, please consider hitting that like button and or the subscribe button. And as always, I would like to remind you to get gadgety.